Good morning, good morning, good morning. Angry fans. It is September the 4th. My summer holiday is over. I recorded a video on Friday, but I've actually taken the uh, lead which I used to download all this video onto the PC to upload it onto YouTube. I took it home, so when I came to upload it at work, I couldn't find a lead. So, Friday's one is late. In fact, you may already have seen Friday's one, I don't know. I don't even know when I'm going to release this one. Anyway, you don't want to know all that. What do you want to know all that for? It's raining. As Peter Kay would say, it's that sort of fine rain that gets really wet. It obviously has been raining overnight. So we've got low white cloud. I think that is it for the really, really sort of nice weather. Now we've just got to grind our way through the winter. So, I uh, recently cleared all the uh, vegetation from around my oil tank, only to find that it stood on a pile of bricks, which the oil bloke has been telling me every time, oh, Mr. Watson, Mr. Watson, I can't fill, I really can't fill this up for you. Your oil tank is standing on a pile of bricks. So I'm right, <clears throat> yeah has been ever since I bought the house 15 years ago. It's a pile of bricks that's been standing up for 15 years. Every time you come to fill up the oil, you complain and say that you're not supposed to fill tanks that are not compliant and dangerous, but you want to sell the oil, so you do. Every time is the last time until the next time. So if we could just do without the wind gin, that would be great. Can you please just fill up the oil tank? Anyway, I've started, instead of buying 2,000 litres at a time, I've been buying 1,000 litres at a time. Which they, doesn't suit me, doesn't suit them, but, you know, they have to make twice as many trips. It means I have to pay more for the oil because I don't get as much of a discount as I would do. But, uh, I'm gonna have to organize another tank. That's the trouble, that's the only trouble. He says to me, he said, what is he said, do you know how much diesel weighs? I'm like, no. You know, do you know how many root canals an upper first molar's got? No, really? No, you don't know, it's because you're not a dentist. And I'm not an oil delivery driver, so why on earth would I know? I mean, actually I've got an idea because I'm a pilot and you do have to know how much fuel weighs, but you know, he doesn't know that, does he? Anyway. Whether or not I know how much it weighs is not going to make the slightest bit of difference as to whether the tank's going to fall down, is it? So I'm very fatalistic. I'm a great believer in determinism, scientific determinism. I think if something, I think the whole the whole thing is just a big equation that's just playing through. Oh, hello. I'm recording myself on two cameras today, which is not the ultimate in vanity. That means that at least one of them's going to work. The problem with the 180 degree camera is it makes my belly look really big, which is uh, regrettable, as I have, as I may have a female fan. <laughs> Even I'm laughing at that. I mean, come on, come on, this is humour. This is self-deprecating humour. My trademark. <laughs> No, this, these bloody fisheye lenses, they make you look fat. I don't know, in actual fact, in real life, I am a rather slim, uh, self-like figure with more than a passing resemblance to George Clooney. But not according to this camera. This camera is just there's some serious problem with the distortion in the glass or something. I don't know what it is. Anyway, you'll just have to use your imagination. So, every other woman I've met has. Why not you? So, what are we talking about today? I'm using the uh, I'm using the rear rear-facing lens. So I'm sorry uh, if you don't have much to look at. 
I might use the front facing one if in future you would like to see where we're going rather than where we've been. Or I might use both if um, I can solve the bandwidth problems. I'm off at the end of the week to Centre Parks, so I'm looking forward to that. That's all pre-booked, that's going to be a bit of a laugh. The weather's going to be pretty, I don't know, if it's like this it'll be pretty grotty, but so we'll have to just take some stuff and wrap up warm. I collect on the way the Times and the Guardian, as you all know, for my patients in the waiting room and uh, I've decided to give up on the Times. The Times is annoying me too much. People think that the newspapers are, you know, designed, they report the news and people buy them because they want to report the news and that is not why you buy a newspaper in the 21st century you buy one because it's a media channel to the masses <clears throat> not so not so many masses now but uh, the idea being that uh, you have a particular point of view and you want to put that point of view across and you use the newspaper to do that by sort of being uh, selective in terms of what you report. So, for example, if you're basically a right-wing conservative, then you print lots of stuff about Mrs. May and uh, uh, how, uh, you know, perhaps she has done some good stuff and how she's, the fact that she won't resign is a good, you know, is, I mean, she's dogged, <laughs> all these sort of things. And uh, you don't print anything about Jeremy Corbyn because don't forget what we said, the way that the establishment deals with you if your problem is to erase you, they erase you from existence. You get erased from history as a byproduct if you're erased from existence. But they uh, wipe you off all their websites. They don't ever refer to anything you do to cite you. No, no matter how, uh, you know, citable anything you say is so Jeremy Corbyn has been erased from the times unless he does something like uh, he's got a wonky tie in which case then they'll print a story Jeremy Corbyn's tie on the wonk yet again <laughs> you know? and everybody who's who's sort of uh, buys the times because it agrees with their point of view will say oh oh that that Corbyn is it, darling? That Corbyn's in the paper again. Wonky tire, can you believe it? <laughs> and then, uh, so, so you know, having got wrong-footed by the result of the of the election, and then got wrong-footed again by the result of the Brexit poll, and being pretty heavily as anti-Brexit. And then, and then made the mistake of not even, you know, not like. The general who, who should, from time to time, who's charging into battle, look behind him and see if the army is still there. <laughs> they don't, they count old Matthew Paris on his horse with his cutlass out. <laughs> he's, he's still charging for like three months afterwards with the, after the country's told him that he's completely on the wrong track and uh, they don't agree with him. And he's berating the public and saying, oh, you don't, You've got it wrong, you've got it wrong. <laughs> you wait and see, it's going to be a great disaster. Uh, and it reminds me of the, uh, funnily enough, the dental contract uh, vote at the General Dental Services Committee all those years ago, when uh, there was, you know, the British Dental Association got it so wrong with the membership, you know, and they, they decided to hold a referendum and the referendum, referendums are, are fantastic things, really. I think it's great that the Swiss have so many of them because they are, you know, and they are they are the most prosperous country in Europe, as far as I know. Probably Liechtenstein runs a close, runs a, you know, it's a close battle for first between Switzerland and Liechtenstein. And unlike uh, the United States or the United Kingdom where, where every person, every citizen has a debt associated with them, and we all, uh, you know, get constantly told how much debt we're in, personally. 
with Switzerland, they have like a credit. They're all told how much they've got in their national savings account. They are, they are struggling to hold the Swiss, the Swiss currency down in value because they are making so much money over there. They're doing so well. And it's all, I'm sure, because they have a much more sort of libertarian approach and uh, they try and they just try and run the country in accordance with the wishes of the people and we, they don't have I, I mean you know I'm not saying they don't have any but I'm, I don't see that they have the sort of uh, uh, deep state establishment that thinks it's entitled you know the, the entitled deep state that says no you leave the running of the country to us you know we're, that's our job our job is to is to uh, you know pervert the money supply <laughs> Just generally take no account at all of uh, democratic wishes, however strongly expressed. And that's how we got into the state we did, isn't it? With dentistry, you know, you get one very strong opinion who's in a position to impose his opinion on everyone else, and uh, before you know it, everyone up and down the country is getting their teeth extracted. Root treatments are a thing of the past. So. <clears throat> Where was I? Anyway, yeah, cancelled the times and decided to, uh, well, I mean, that was a... I rang him up one day and I said, look, I want to cancel. Why is that? I said, because you're on the wrong side of the election. You're on the wrong side of Brexit. I said, no, you're on the wrong side of Trump every day. I don't want to hear every day, oh, Trump's an idiot, Trump's an idiot, Trump's an idiot. You're all going to... Brexit's a disaster, Brexit's a disaster. I don't want to hear it. You know, you've abandoned all pretense to um, report anything objectively um, and I know that uh, you know, then the BBC always makes this argument down there they say oh for every Mr Angry like you on one side of the argument we've got another Mr Angry on the other side of the argument saying saying that you know you've been too nice to Trump and you've been uh, uh, too nice to Mrs May and uh, so, you know, that's, that's the cross we have to bear, is the people like you complaining on both sides in equal numbers. Well, I don't know. <clears throat> I'd be very surprised if people were complaining about the times in equal numbers on both sides. I really honestly don't think that they are. I think that they're probably, uh, most of their readers are happy with the line that they take. You know, every day a cartoon about Trump. Every day a cartoon about Trump. And... Uh, and nothing at all about Corbyn, and, uh, and then a few, a small number of people like me who are, you know, perhaps are looking for a more balanced approach. And the thing is, you can get a more balanced approach. I mean, it's not like, it's not like in the old days where if you were right wing, you bought the sun; if you were left wing, you bought the mirror. And that was the balance. That was the balance. You know, you, I mean, if you were sort of middle of the road, I suppose you had to buy the sun and the mirror, or you bought the. Guardian, well the Guardian's left wing isn't it I mean the Express or the Mail I suppose were more, although the Mail's gone right wing you know I mean, what did you buy you, <laughs> you just bought something that just reflected your views didn't you and now the reason why these newspapers are suffering so much and I think that they are suffering and quite rightly too is because um, of things like Google News, what do I do when I wake up in the morning I've got the Times app on my phone I've got Google News, and which one do I look at first? The Google News. Because Google News is, they just go with a sort of a blunderbuss approach. Google News is, is a search algorithm. It's, I mean, okay, someone's gonna tell me it's not politically neutral, but I can't say that I've noticed that in the same way as I've noticed that the Times is not politically neutral. Basically, I think Google does serve up whatever you know happens to be the news, and it's done on the basis of what's what pe other people are looking at. And broadly speaking, people are going to be looking at the news in proportion to how much they think that it might impact their lives. You know how how sort of um, substantive it is. You know how relevant it is, how impactful it is, which is what you want the news for, isn't it? Really, you want to know. Is there a typhoon on the way? Is there another tribe coming to invade? Are oh, the crops going to fail? That's basically all the news is. It's, and that's and because of the disproportionately large effect that bad news has on you, um, 
you are looking for bad news, really, because, I mean, bad news could kill you. Someone having a baby somewhere doesn't really, you know, I mean, that's good news and good for them and good for the tribe and good for the population <laughs> and good for the baby. But not really, doesn't have one more baby, more or less, is not going to make much difference to me. But one, uh, one more uh, epidemic of HIV, more or less, will make a ma well, could make a massive impact on my life. So, so you're looking for news that's, that might have a disproportionate impact, and that's always the bad stuff. So Google, I find, you know, and you obviously you still have to flick, 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 and sift, sift through it, don't you, quickly, because you're, you know, I mean, probably one story in in a hundred or one story in twenty is is relevant to you. But you do get a very good, I think, a very balanced uh, view of what's going on. And there's no bias against, there's no domestic bias. I mean, I think, I mean, obviously, I, I think that Google does have a domestic bias in that they're not, I don't see very many articles in Russian or, or French, you know, so they know I speak English and they know I'm in the UK. And so they are going to tailor the news slightly more towards the UK but I don't think they have an agenda with regard to the UK you know they don't have a they don't have an agenda so I tend to get the UK news and unfortunately a lot of it is served up by Google and it comes from the Times and the BBC and and the Guardian and and whatever so they are obviously recycled. see a lot of stuff that isn't they're still recycled but from places that you'd never ever look you know you know I mean Yorkshire Evening Post and all that you get all that all that actually, I actually haven't seen the Yorkshire Evening Post on Google no which is a shame it's a great newspaper I found but uh, yeah so but I tried to cancel the times oh and that was uh, you know you're ringing this guy up and he's saying well why have you can like, oh, let's have a chat why have you cancelled so and I don't really talk politics. And, I, and if I was going to talk politics, I don't know why I would talk politics with some anonymous guy from the Times, who I think is probably, you know, they all, when they're training to do MI5, they probably all have a stint at the BBC and the Times. I, I really don't want to talk my politics with him. Uh, and outside the family, immediate family, and I don't even like talking politics with my, outside my close family, because even the... The cousins and the nieces and the nephews are all, you know, how can I put it? You don't, you know, you can, you can get some polarised views. You know, I had quite an interesting argument with someone the other day within the family about whether or not uh, the police should should have the right to put cameras in your toilet and cameras in your bedroom. And their view was that if you've got nothing to hide, then, uh, and the police want to do that and they think they've got a good reason to do that, then... Um, then why shouldn't they be allowed to? And, I mean, where do you start with someone like that? <laughs> you know, you're like I'm, like, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, right, you've got about two years serious reading to do before we even have this chat. You know, you've got a, you went through uh, school and, and history didn't really ever bother you, did it? You know, so... And there I am talking politics with this guy from The Times. And they're on some sort of commission, you know, they've got some sort of commission whereby if they can talk you into keeping the same deal for half price, then uh, they'll, they, it's a win and they get a tick, uh, like at school, a star, and if then they have a phone call and the person it succeeds, and it, it is a success because you have to really work hard to cancel the times. If they succeed in cancelling, oh, the, he was royally pissed off I mean and not and didn't even try and hide it I mean he took it I said to him you're taking this personally and then I realized afterwards of course he was taking it personally because it affects him personally he does he doesn't get his star if someone cancels then he falls behind on the class on the class star board so but you know in the end I just said to him look I'm gonna he said well he said, you're getting a very good deal, you know. He said, not even anyone gets, not new customers don't even get this deal and you're getting half of that. I'm doing your half of that. I can't understand what your problem is. And I said, the problem is that if you value something, then the price is not a problem. I said, and if you don't 
value it, then even one penny is too much. And that was a valuable bit of advice for him. But does he, is he gonna listen? No, no. Did he even understand what I was trying to tell him? No. All he was, he was just pissed off that I canceled, which is fine. So now, if you want to tell me what to, uh, what to buy instead of the Guardian, I mean, obviously the Telegraph is the, the sort of the obvious choice, isn't it? But I don't know. Who knows? I might try the Telegraph for a bit. I do, I, I must say the Guardian I find reasonably inoffensive. And I used to buy that with cash, so what I might do is I might, um, I might subscribe to that because that will put that down from £2 to £1.60. And then start buying the Telegraph on a daily basis and just see what it's like. You know, just yeah. I know what it's going to be like. It's going to be worse than the bloody times, isn't it? Anybody, if there's a good newspaper, I have a good mind just to put an iPad out there and just tell them to read Google News. All right, lovely, I'm back at work. Technology permitting, you'll see this at some point. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.